united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. God bless you and welcome to United with Christ. I'm your host, Elder Christopher Brooks. I'm excited today to share with you this word that I have for you. I'm here today just to encourage you as we have entered now into the holiday season and we are uh, coming towards the end of this year. I believe that God has something in store for us that is going to exceed even our expectation. While this time of year, a lot of people are excited and it's a time of family and friends and being able to reflect uh, this can also be a time that can be a great struggle for a lot of people. And so I want to uh, just spend the next few moments with you today to just encourage you, to give you something that uh, the Lord has shared with me that I believe will help to uh, strengthen you and just to take you out throughout the rest of your day and just help you with your walk with the Lord. I'm excited to be here with you. We're going to be talking today uh, from the thought, from the idea, stay in the fight. We want to encourage you today to stay in the fight. So let's just open with a word of prayer, and then we're going to dive right in. Father, I thank you. I bless you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. God, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I pray now for those that are watching at home or at work or those that are watching uh, on live stream. I pray right now, Father God, that you would bless them, touch them. God, let your word Come forth, God, and let it uh, do what you have set for it to do in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're talking about staying in the fight. And for those of you that are watching, whatever uh, prayer requests or need that you may be having today, we're praying with you. We're believing God uh, for the best for you. We know that all things are working together for the good to them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. So we're here uh, at this at this station, praying with you and believing God that God's going to show up in your life. And so our subject or our thought is coming from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. And this is what it says. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So we're talking about staying in the fight. Uh, I enjoy, I love, one of my favorite movies is the Rocky movies uh, with Sylvester Stallone. One of my favorite ones is Rocky IV where he's fighting against the Russian. And this, uh, this particular fighter, uh, he was bigger than, than Rocky. He had all of this latest technology to help him train. Uh, he had killed his friend in, in a fight and all these things uh, that made this particular opponent seem so much bigger and so much better than what uh, Rocky would be able to do. But when Rocky uh, agreed to fight him, everybody told him he couldn't do it, that it was impossible. They made this opponent seem to be uh, less than uh, more than human, that he was this machine. Uh, and, and it goes throughout the movie, throughout the fight, and Rocky's in this fight with the Russian, and he's fighting him, and he's fighting his oppo opponent, until finally he throws a punch, and it cuts him, and he begins to bleed. He goes to his corner, and his coach is telling him, he says, see, look, he's not a machine. He's just a man. What is it that you're facing today? that the enemy has tried to make it seem to be so much bigger than what you can handle? What is it that you're facing today that seems to be so impossible to overcome? Emotionally or financially, what is that thing that seems to be a giant in your life? Well, I'm here today to encourage you to stay in the fight because the thing that seems to be impossible, the Bible says that with God, there's nothing that is impossible. It lets us know that all things are possible for those who are in him. That when we have Christ in our life, that when we are disciples of Christ, when we are united with Christ, there is nothing that the enemy can bring in your life. There is no demon. There is no, no, no challenge. There's no struggle. There's no addiction. There's no failure 
in your past or even in your present. There is nothing that, that the enemy can bring your way that your God cannot help you to overcome. God has called you to conquer. He's called you to win. He's called you to be successful. He's called you to be an overcomer. That's what God's plan is for your life. And while the enemy will try to make the problems of this world seem to be so much bigger than what they really are, the word of God lets us know that if God be for us, he is more than this world against us. That's where we find our strength. That's where we find our hope. We have to have a godly fight in our spirit. We have to have the heart of a fighter in our spirit where we don't apologize for the, for the boldness that we have and for the assurance that we have in God, where we have this, this tenacity and we have this fervency to fight the good fight of faith, to continue on in, in pursuing the, 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 the plan and the purpose that God has for our life, that we'll continue to live a life that will please him and bring him glory. And when the enemy comes in, that we are conditioned to be able to identify when it's just a trick of the enemy, that we can identify when, this, when, when we are being faced with something, that it's not flesh and blood, but it's against the devil. It is against the enemy of our soul, that it is a trick, it is a lie. The things that he tries to speak over your life, the things he tries to entertain in your mind, that it's just something to deceive you into feeling like that your life is a life of defeat, that your life is a life of limitations, that you're, that you're missing out and that you're lacking and that you're insignificant and that you don't have enough. But I'm here to tell you today to stay in the fight because God is with you. God has predestined for you to win. And though you may be in a challenge right now, though you may be contending and though you may be in a fight right now, do not give up because God has victory for you. Victory over that addiction, victory over that struggle, victory in that family crisis, victory over those emotional issues that you may be facing right now. God doesn't, doesn't want you to live a life of defeat. His plan for you is in a life of limitation and a life uh, of just uh, getting by or a life of just being satisfied with the things, with the way things are. But God has something that is exceeding abundantly and above all that you could ask or think. He has a life for you that is exceeding, that will exceed an expectation, that will go beyond what you can believe, beyond what you could imagine, beyond what you could even ask to pray, think to pray for. God has some blessings in store for you. But in order for you to be able to grab hold to the things he's promised for you, you have to fight. You have to fight because there is an enemy that wants to destroy you. There is an enemy that wants to hinder you. There is an enemy that wants to keep you bound. But the Bible says he whom the son has set free is free indeed. You have to make the choice today. And that's how we fight. We have to make the choice to walk in our freedom to live in that abundance, to, to operate and live in our healing, to live in that deliverance, to, to grab hold to the promises of God because the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. If God has promised to bless you, then that's what's going to happen in your life. That's what it is. If God has promised in his word that by his stripes you're healed, then you can accept and receive that healing today. And but that's the fight because the enemy wants you to feel like that you're always going to be sick, that the sickness that you have, you're always going to have to live with it and you're not going to be able to overcome it and you're never going to be healed. But you have to hold on to the word of God. We fight not with flesh and blood, not with weapons. We're not fighting people. We're not fighting a personality. <clears throat> but we are fighting a spiritual battle. We have to understand that what we are contending with, it is a fight not for flesh and blood and not for stuff, not for things, but it is a battle for your soul. The enemy wants to, to cause you to miss out on a relationship with Jesus Christ. He knows the blessings and the favor and the abundance that God has for you. But if he can get you disconnected 
if he can cause you to be discouraged, if he can shake your faith, if he can cause you to, to begin to question the authority and the power of God in your life, if he could try to isolate you, and that's what he does. He tries to isolate us when we're going through some of our toughest challenges, times in making you feel insignificant and feel that your struggle is, is just uh, unique to you and nobody else would ever understand and nobody else has ever gone through it or, no, or people are going to judge you and, and, tell, and try to make you feel, feel condemned. But the devil is a lie. That is a, a trick of the enemy to try to isolate you. I've watched on, you know, uh, National Geographic or you see uh, the different animal shows where they talk about the different pred predatory animals. And you see uh, where they're in the jungle and they oftentimes will look for the youngest or they look for uh, one that's uh, alone and has gotten isolated from the pack. One that has maybe been wounded and is not at full strength. And that's the one that that's the that's the one that the that the lion or the or the cheetah will begin to to try to attack and, and go after because it will be less of a fight for the one that's weak, for the one that is crippled, for the one that is isolated. And that's what the enemy tries to do. That is his strategy. That's his tactic to make you feel because you made a mistake, because you have uh, messed up, because you have some, some issues going on, because you've had some, some misunderstandings with family, because you're going through a financial hardship that now you have to isolate yourself from others. But it's a trick of the enemy because he knows if he can get you, if he can isolate you, if he can make you feel alone, if he can make you feel that you're not worthy and make you feel that because you've messed up that God can't forgive you, then he can get you by yourself to try to destroy you. But God loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he is there to, to restore and to redeem and to renew, to revive. He's there to help strengthen, to heal you from the hurt of the past, from the hurt and pain of what you're of, of, and the struggles of today to help you with the emotional conflicts that may be going on in your mind. That's what God is here to do for you, but you have to fight. That's where the fight comes in. That's why I encourage you that if you don't have a church home to find a good Bible-based church full of faith-filled believers with the love of God that will, that will do life with you. No, God has not called any of us to do life by ourselves, to do life alone. He didn't call you to be an island isolated from everybody else. But we are better together. We are stronger together. He says that where there's two or three, he'll together in the midst, that he will come and step in there, that he will come and he will dwell with us. Even when he sent his disciples out, he sent them out together. Why? Because he understands that in this fight, if we're going to stay in the fight, we have to do it together. If we're going to win, if we're going to conquer, if we're going to be who God has called us to be, we have to do it together as the body of Christ. That's what he has for us. He has victory in store for you, but I want you to stay in that fight. Understand that the tricks and, the, and the, the tools that the enemy will use will try to discourage you and will try to keep you from fulfilling your God-given purpose. But today, we want to make sure that when, you, uh, when we leave you today, that you're encouraged to stay in the fight and know that if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. We're going to go now to a, to a uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to continue on talking about staying in the fight being more than conquerors through Christ Jesus right after this. All right, welcome back. We're talking about staying in the fight. And I am excited about this word because I believe that somebody right now is being encouraged by this. I believe that you're going to have such a, a renewed sense of of wanting to stay in there and hang in there, continue to fight, that you're going to continue uh, with, this, with this journey and with your walk with God to see your faith strengthened and to see it renewed and to see your life being radically changed. 
Hallelujah. I believe that in order for our faith to grow, in order for our faith to be strengthened, it has to go through testing. It has to go through something that's going to cause us to have to stretch our faith, to have to believe God with everything that we have, to believe God even when we don't necessarily see how it can work out. Even when situations seem impossible, we have to fight and using our faith, knowing that no matter what it may be that we're dealing with financially, socially, professionally, whatever it may be, that God is there and he's going to see us through it and that we are going to come out on the other side in victory. So we're not praying for victory, but we're praying from a place of victory, that our life is a life of victory, that we're living a victorious life. That's what God wants for you. That's what being a believer is all about. It's about winning. It's about overcoming. It's about being more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, that when we have Christ on the inside of us, that there is nothing that this world can bring to us that we won't be able to overcome. There is nothing that life can throw our way. And I'm a living witness that when life throws a lot at you, when you find yourself in a storm, in a spiritual storm, in a financial storm, in a storm in relationships, that God, he can take you and take you through it and bring you out on the other side with peace, with joy, bring you out on the other side better than you were before you went through it. And that's what we're here today to encourage you to stay in the fight. Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We all have a fight. We all have battles. We all have challenges. All of us have struggles and issues that every day, every day of our life, we have to give it to God. Every day of our life, we have to spend time with him and ask God to continue to, to walk with us and to lead us into the paths of righteousness, to lead us into a path that will help us to, to live so that we please him. Every day, I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much you pray, how much you speak in tongues or how much Bible you know. There's always going to be a fight. There's always going to be a challenge in your life. There's always going to be something that's going to try to test your faith. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You have to know that, you're, that the battle that you're fighting is worth fighting for. Why? Because you are fighting so, so that you would bring God glory, so that your life would be a light to somebody else. Because there's somebody coming behind you that's going to feel like that their struggle is too great for them to overcome. But because you were able to hang in there, because you were able to be victorious, you'll be able to share your story with somebody else. That's what your testimony is for. It's so that you can encourage another, another believer to stay in the fight. That you can encourage somebody else to let them know that, hey, if God can free me from this addiction, he can surely free you. If God can help me through that divorce, then he can help you through yours. If he can help me through this broken relationship and he can bring restoration, he can restore somebody else. That's what God, that's what God does with us. He'll take what seems to be the very worst of our life, the very worst of times, and he will bless us even in the midst of it. And he'll show himself strong and he will show himself faithful. And when you come out and you have overcome and you have won, you can say to God be the glory for the things he has done. We have to stay in the fight. You have to understand that the battle that you're fighting, it belongs to God. That the battle that you're fighting, the things that you're dealing with in life, the, 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 the warfare, the spiritual warfare that we're fighting, it's not, it's not against the white man or the black man or a Republican or a Democrat. It's not something about a, a government system, but it's against principalities and powers. It is a spiritual battle. And the only way that we are going to win the fight is if we begin to, to fight with our spiritual weapons. And what does that look like? It is through prayer, praying, receiving the Holy Spirit, 
praying in the spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit of God to strengthen you and build you up in your most holy faith through reading the word of God, through having a time of daily devotion that you set aside time for the word of God. That is how we fight when we come together as as a body of believers and we begin to worship God and we receive the word of God and we fellowship with other faith-filled believers, drawing strength from one another, being able to share our testimony of the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, we have overcome. That's how we're going to fight, by activating our faith, by standing in righteousness, understanding that you are the righteousness of God, declaring the word of God and not declaring our troubles, by speaking words of faith, by speaking words of life and not death, by by having a mindset and, and, and allowing our mind to be renewed through the word of God, by allowing our, our mind to be renewed, by declaring scripture and declaring what his word says about us, that we are blessed and not cursed, that we're the head and not the tail, that we are healed, that we are delivered and set free, that we have power, the power to prosper, that we have his goodness and his mercy that is following us all the days of our life, that we are a friend of God. Those are the things, those are the weapons that we're fighting with, that when the enemy comes in, we can plead the blood of Jesus and through his shed blood on Calvary, the fight that Jesus fought and won on Calvary's cross, that because of his blood, we have healing. We are restored. We are now the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, that we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we have access, direct access to go boldly to the throne of grace. Those are the tools that we can fight with. Stay in the fight. Don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on God because God has not given up on you. I don't care what it is that you're dealing with today. I don't care what it is that you may be facing with what that struggle may look like. You have been called to conquer and you have to stay in that fight because the fight that you're going through, God is there right there with you to see you victorious. Don't be passive in your victory. Don't allow the enemy to just come in and do whatever he wants, but understand because you're a child of the king, you have been destined to win. You have been promised for victory. You have been born again that you would declare his goodness in the earth. And you have to declare that I shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord. That's what God wants for you. Stay in the fight. Father, I thank you and I bless you for this time. I pray, God, that those that are watching and listening, God, that your word has permeated their heart. God, that it has opened their mind. God, that they could see their situations through the eyes of faith. And God, understanding, God, that they have to stay in this fight because you have called for us to win. God, that you have called for us to conquer, that you have called for us, God, to walk in victory. And God, I thank you now for healing for those that may be sick and for deliverance for those that may be, that may feel bound and for those, God, that may have generational curses that it is broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. I thank you for for tuning in. I pray that this holiday season will be a blessing for you, that you will experience the love of God, that you will experience his goodness during this time. And that whatever you're dealing with, whatever it is that the enemy may try to bring, that you'll see that and that you will stay in the fight because God wants you to win. And I'm here to declare to you that your best is still yet to come. God bless you. Heaven smile on you.